Hello everyone and welcome to yet another video. Today we will be talking about cinematic lighting and more specifically about night scenes. So let's take a look at what I've created for you guys today. In this video, you will learn some basic techniques for lighting your night scenes. I'm using this little scene I made as an example of how to go about the lighting. I will be talking about my thoughts behind placing a light, and my own artistic choices. When this video is over, you will hopefully have learned enough to try out some of the techniques yourself. I have therefore made another scene to which there is a link in the description, which you can try out lighting yourself. I have also done this, but I would very much like to see what your version of a night scene looks like. So feel very free to tag me in your videos or Instagram posts. Let's get started. If we open Blender with no lights and with the world color set to white with a value of 1, this is what we get. A pretty boring flat image. If this was a daylight scene, I would usually just change the color to an environment texture, go to hdrihaven.com and grab an hdri to put in the background. And this would give me a pretty decent result with some nice clouds, some sunlight hitting my lego man. On a lazy day I would let this pass for my final lighting. But this is not as easy with a night scene, and let me show you why. This time I have uploaded a night hdri. Let's see what happens. When lighting a night scene, it's all about silhouettes and the balance between highlights and shadows. In my experience, it's impossible to find an HDRI that fits my needs specifically. I have never been able to just upload an HDRI and call it a day. This is because HDRIs are not very easy to edit. The most creative freedom you have is changing the rotation on the C-axis. Yeah! If I were to change the strength of my HDRI, you wouldn't be able to read the image and see what is going on. And if I leave the strength at default, we get this flat, almost even lit image. So in contrast to the daylight scene, we need additional lighting to make this look cinematic and smooth. So let's dive in. Step 1. Sky and directional lighting. The first thing I do is change it from the environment texture to the sky texture that is built in with Blender. The sky texture is procedural, which makes it easy to customize. Let me quickly explain the settings. First of all, you have the option to turn the sun disk off or on. This determines whether or not you would like a directional sun in the sky, or if you would like an ambient sky environment with even lighting. Most of these settings are pretty intuitive. So let me explain the settings that might be difficult to understand. The altitude setting determines the distance from sea level to the location of the camera. If the camera is placed on a beach, then the value should be set to zero, because that is the level of the sea. However, if the camera is placed on a mountain or someplace high, the camera should be set relative to that place. So on a mountain I would set it to 5000 meters, since that would be more suitable. These last settings are pretty difficult to understand, and usually I just leave them at default, or just mess around with the settings until I get a result I'm satisfied with. But just to summarize, this is how you should think about the settings. If you increase the air, you usually get a more orange tint. If you increase the dust, you get a more diffuse look. And if you increase the ozone, you get a more bluish tint to the scene. The last setting is the strength, and that determines the strength of the light that is cast by the sky dome. So with that information in mind, I started to mess around with the settings until I got a result that I was satisfied with. Note that we are not going for a final look. What we want is a directional light and some very subtle ambient lighting. Let's give this a render and analyze what we got so far. Right now we have a moon, which is the directional light. It's not a very strong light, but it still casts a rim light on our Lego man. A rim light is a light placed behind a subject to expose the outline of the subject. In our case, that light is the moon. This lighting highlights the contours of a subject and creates a dramatic and mysterious effect. However, rim lights can be used in a variety of ways. Furthermore, we have some very weak ambient light. Ambient light is also known as general lighting. It's any light that you haven't set up yourself. This includes natural lighting or even pre-existing lights that are built around the location where you're shooting. In my case, the ambient light helps to lift the shadows all around the scenes just a little bit. But definitely not enough. So let's move on to step 2. Fill and key light. What I want to do first is increase my directional lighting. I do this by adding in an area lamp and put it in the same direction as my moonlight. By doing this I make it look like the moon is actually brighter than it is without increasing the light overall in my scene. By doing it more locally I have more control over my shadows and highlights. So if we give this a render and look at the before and after, you will see a huge difference. And it still looks like all the light is coming from the moon, which is great for now. A key light is the main source of light, and in this scene, this area lamp will be our key light. The scene is starting to look great, but it's still way too dark, so we need a fill light. So I duplicate the area lamp and place it on top of my Lego man. I decrease the strength and remember to set the color to the same color as the ambient. 
This is very important, otherwise it would look like a different light source. And since my ambient color is coming from the sky, I know that the color should be blue. A fill light literally fills in the light. It helps to decrease the contrast between highlights and shadows, so we get a more even lit image. Overall, it makes the image more readable. My fill light might just be too strong, but I think this is starting to look very good. Let's move on to step 3. Backlight and artistic choices. The lighting is almost done, but I do want a backlight to make my character pop just a little bit more. I could make another light to represent the moon as a backlight. However, I want to introduce another color, so this is where you need to use your imagination. Even though there is no street light in the scene, you could imagine that there could be a street light in the background. And therefore we can make it look like a street light is casting light down the street. And by changing the color to an orange yellow tint, we are ready for our final render. With the small amount of time I've put into this image, I am really happy about the result. And if we put on a suitable grade, this looks money. However, some of you might be thinking, this looks nothing like the image you showed us in the beginning. And you're absolutely right. And this is because I used add-ons to create this image. And I usually don't want to use add-ons in my tutorials. This is because I think you can achieve all the same results just by spending more time. But recently I have realized that time really is money. And I only advertise these add-ons because they can save you a ton of time and create really high quality results. So the next step I'm gonna show you how I use the add-ons to create the final result. Step 4. GoPro's light textures and physical starlight and atmosphere. Gobo's Light Textures is a library of textures to generate ultra-realistic shadows in your scenes. Thanks to the Asset Manager, it's easy to import your Gobos into Blender with one click. It's a complete collection of HD-ready textures for Blender, and in total you will find 95 textures. I am personally a huge fan of the 13 animated Gobos, which create these animated shadows. And of course, it's 100% customizable. Enough talk, let's see how I made my scene look better with Gobos Light Textures. So with any other add-on, you go under Preferences, but this time you go under File Path, click on the little plus icon, and then you locate the Gobos Light Texture folder. With that done, you want to open a new window and change it from 3D View to the Asset Browser. Then you want to change it from Current File to Gobos Light Textures, and then you're all set. And as you can see, we have 9 categories. We have Abstract, Animated Leaves, Caustics, Clouds, Forest, Geometric, Grid, Leaves, Windows. It's such a huge collection. For my scene, I used one of the leaf textures. I simply dragged and dropped it into my scene and placed it how I like. What you're watching is almost real time. This literally took me 2 minutes to set up and the result is stunning. If you can't tell, I am excited guys. I am super excited. The realism we get from one light is just amazing. The second light I added in was from the category Caustics and I chose the water reflections. I added this one in to make it look like the water was reflecting up on the boat and on the character. This is just to add even more realism. Once again this took around 2 minutes and if you go under the shading tab you can even customize the texture. As I said it's 100% customizable and I just changed the scale of a mapping node to make it fit my need. I then duplicated the light and placed it on the other side of the boat and voila. And that is how you increase the quality of your work with 100% in 5 minutes. Right now there is 25% off the Gobos light textures. So if you're interested in this add-on, consider following the link in the description to support the channel. Oh, these images you say? Well, they're created with a physical starlight and atmosphere add-on, which is incredible. With the add-on installed, you simply enable the atmosphere and right off the bat you'll get a great result. Haha, <laughs> but it gets better. Because this sky is procedural, just like Blender's built-in sky. Only this add-on is way more powerful. You get procedural clouds, procedural stars. And you can animate the sun, you can animate the sky, you can animate the clouds. The opportunities are endless. Oh, and did I mention you can enable fog? And not just any fog, a realistic ground fog, which changes based on the distance from the objects. And if you are a lazy creator, fear not, because there are a ton of presets which you can choose from. You can even save your own presets if you create something which you like. So what I did for my LEGO scene was to tweak the settings until I got a result that I liked. There are many great tutorials out there on how to use this add-on. And it's super simple. So if you want your hands on this add-on, the best time is now. Because there is 25% off this add-on. Use the link in the description and support the channel. And that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching guys. Consider subscribing or liking if you feel like it. Or otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.